Hey guys, Jordan here, your new electronic music producer friend and instructor for the How to Produce Music in 2019 Without Tearing Your Hair Out course. In the last lesson, you learned what notes are and that as we play each note, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, the sound that is played gradually rises in frequency or pitch. You also learned that choosing the right notes to create a melody is done pretty easily by knowing what scales are or what keys are. Additionally, you also learned that the key note is the first musical note in any given scale and the patterns behind every major and minor scale in Western music. You may have memorized that as K23 and K122, or you may have memorized it as KWWH, WWWH, or KWH, WWH, WW, all those wonderful patterns. One way or another, you now have a great foundation for picking the right sounds to make inspiring melodies without just choosing random keys on the piano and hoping it sounds right. So today, we're going to build off that knowledge by teaching you how to hopscotch or parkour your way through scales to create melodies known as arpeggios and chords. Now you know major and minor scales, and you know that major scales sound happy or uplifting or generally lighter in tone, and that minor scales sound more mysterious, sad, or darker in tone. But how do we use this to actually create a melody? Do we just pick random notes on the scale and play them? Well, I mean, that actually does work. Uh, it may not be the best way to come up with melodies, but if you hit a bunch of random notes in a scale, eventually you would come up with something catchy. But rather than rolling dice over and over again to try to get... Yahtzee! Let's just cheat. You think I would cheat during a game of Yahtzee? You flip one of the die, roll it again. No, I'm not gonna roll it again. Roll it again. Or what? Roll it again! What the f- And learn some more patterns that are proven to create good sounding melodies. Don't worry, these patterns are going to be easier than the scale patterns you just learned. In fact, I already taught them to you in one of my philosophical rants, and in fact... These patterns are at the core of your very existence. So I already taught you about the triangle guy, Pythagoras, and how he basically proved the entire universe was music through his research that he called the harmony of the spheres. And since those old pasty mathematicians from ancient times are just so interesting to you, I, I know you're itching to learn more. Don't worry. Don't worry, I'm gonna teach you more. This is Leonardo of Pisa not to be confused with Leonardo da Vinci, and he's considered by many to be the greatest European mathematician of the Middle Ages. He's more commonly known as Fibonacci, and the reason he's so important in music and the reason I'm bringing him up at all is because of a discovery that is attributed to him we now call the Fibonacci Sequence. Before you rage quit this course because I'm talking about ancient history again and math, have no fear, the Fibonacci sequence could be taught to a small child. You start with one and one, and you add them together to create two. And then each new number after that is created by adding the current number, two, to the number before it, one. So basically you have one, one, two, three plus two is five, 5 plus 3 is 8, and 8 plus 5 is 13, and so on. It just keeps going and going. So it's a very simple pattern. But wait, did you notice? Remember my rant about how light and sound have the same patterns? The color wheel has 8 primary colors with 13 semitones, and a chromatic octave in music also has 8 tones and 13 semitones. Well, both 8 and 13 are numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. Not just that, but 1, 3, and 5 are also in the Fibonacci sequence, and those are the most important numbers that you have to remember right now. Welcome to the world of the arpeggio. 
By learning the patterns for scales, arpeggios, and chords, you can begin creating melodies without even touching an instrument. What are you trying to tell me? That I can... Compose melodies? No, Neo. I'm trying to tell you that when you're ready, you won't have to. Another way of looking at scales are like stairs. Each stair is a note in your scale, gradually going upwards, representing how it increases in frequency and pitch. And to create an arpeggio, rather than walking up the stairs, you skip up the stairs, landing on every other step. In other words, you start on the first step, you hop to the third step, and finally hop to the fifth step. Pretty easy, right? This 1-3-5 pattern is known as a triad, and it's also used to create the most common chords that we use in all Western music. The only difference between a chord and an arpeggio, for all intents and purposes, is that with a chord, you play all these notes simultaneously, and with an arpeggio, you hop between note to note. So, a chord, you play notes simultaneously, arpeggio is playing each individual note. Now let's see this in action. So here I have a blank uh, project open in my DAW, Ableton, and we're just gonna use the Tyrell N6 plugin just because it's free. And uh, once again, we're just gonna load up the preset here. Just click here, load up the preset L Harpo again. And uh, I made a couple really minor tweaks to it, just very, very minor. And, um, we're going to go ahead and work on some of these arpeggios in, in action and I'm just going to kind of freestyle some random melodies and show you how easy it is to create unique sounds and melodies utilizing these patterns that you just learned. So let's go ahead and open up the piano roll. I'm going to double click right here. That creates a new clip and I can raise this up and down to see the piano roll. And we're going to go in here and we're going to assign some notes. Now I have a little keyboard next to me that I can play with my left hand while I'm showing you what's on screen. And we're going to do some demonstrations. We're going to start off in C, very common C major key. Okay, so should be pretty familiar. If not, you're going to get very familiar with that scale. That is a skill of C major. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and practice some of these arpeggios. So I was talking to you about the one, three, five pattern. So let's go ahead and see that in action. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight notes in an octave. And if we wanna do an arpeggio, we go one, three, five. So let's see what that sounds like. You can go to the eighth if you want. That's the eighth note, the octave or the tonic note. So one, three, five, eight. Or and then you can basically just experiment with these. That's a, that's a basic arpeggio, but you can how it becomes a melody is how you play that arpeggio. So for example, you can do things like this. So that's just one, three, five, one, three, five, one, three, five, one, three, five, over and over and over again. You can do it backwards. You can uh, alternate to the eighth. And um, just different alterations of these notes. And you can add a seventh. That's one of my favorites. And so that's one, three, five, seven, eight. So I meant to say add a seventh. I don't know if I said that correctly or not. So add a seventh. That's the seventh note in the scale of C major. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we can add that and go one, three, five, seven, eight, seven, five, three, one, three, five, seven, eight, seven, five, three. And just kind of go through these patterns
and you can create a lot of really interesting sounds. And then while you're still in the key of C major, you're not restricted to one, three, five, seven, starting on C. You can still do these same one, three, five, seven concepts, these patterns, by going somewhere else on the scale, making sure that you're playing the correct notes that are in the scale of C major, which if you know, you're just beginning, which most of you are, a uh, good way to help you remember that is to actually paint the notes somewhere on the piano roll. So you can go key note, let's, let's start down here actually. Let's turn off uh, the preview so we don't have to listen to that when I move the notes around. So key note, whole step, and, and by the way, I know I'm going over a lot of stuff really fast in the DAW, and you're probably like, whoa, Jordan, what do all these buttons do? You're clicking all these buttons. This is the melody portion, keep that in mind. It doesn't matter if you know how to do all this stuff in the DAW yet, that comes next. Melody comes first because that's gonna set the foundation for everything else. So I'm gonna teach you how to use the DAW as we progress through this and um, you're gonna become more and more familiar but right now I just want you to focus on the melody aspects. So in all DAWs you're gonna have a piano roll like this and a helpful tool when you're just learning scales and you're not familiar with them yet is put all the notes that are in the scale right on the screen so that you can use them as a reference as you're making the melody so key note whole step whole step half whole step whole step whole step half is our c major scale and now i have all those notes right there to look at so i can even drag them around with my mouse and i can just be like well there you go and now i've just created the scale of C major, which, you know, we just played a moment ago. So if I want to play that. Oh, it's going a little bit quick there, but <laughs> there's the scale of C major played very quickly. And uh, I find it helpful to put, put the notes like that and then we can start experimenting. So let's try that one, three, five pattern right you can see each note light up so it's one three five one three five let's try moving that to other parts of the C major scale doing the same pattern just on different parts of the scale and I'm gonna make this just a little bit bigger just so that you can see what we're doing here and I'm actually gonna double this so that we have two octaves now of the C major scale to work in so I've got one, three, five here, and I've got one, three, five all the way up here. So still the same arpeggio, still the same one, three, five pattern, just at different parts of the scale. And as you know, scales continue on forever. So we could do that all the way up until we can't even hear it anymore. And inversely, we could go lower and lower. So. I'm just going to play randomly and you're going to see how easy it is. I'm going to use the one, three, five pattern. I'm going to, and my only restriction is I'm only going to play notes in the C major scale and I'm just going to do it randomly. So this is not, if it sounds like crap, don't judge me. I'm just playing randomly to demonstrate how the notes will sound correct. Okay. So we're just going to start off at the bottom here and I'm just going to go to random areas. So. So, I mean, that's a real quick demonstration of just taking the one, three, five pattern, moving it around. Alternatively, you could go a little bit higher. So, no matter where you go, when you're playing those one, three, fives and you're doing it within that that scale and it won't always be the first third and fifth note if you're moving around like that but it's still the same pattern where you're basically just skipping every other note so if if that helps you to remember it a little bit easier arpeggios are basically just playing a scale at any part in the scale and just skipping over every other note 
and arpeggios have technically an arpeggio really is the 135 triad that I referenced earlier that's like the core component of what an arpeggio is but technically nowadays in nowadays terminology uh, in the mainstream people will call anything an arpeggio that's moving up and down in a, in a scale of any pattern at all. It doesn't have to be just one, three, five. As I showed you earlier, one, three, five, seven, eight, seven, five, three kind of thing. And you know, going up and down the arpeggios and alternating. And one thing that you're gonna find out as we progress further are there are even tools called MIDI effects there's a thing on here on the screen right now called an arpeggiator which basically creates these kind of patterns for you and it kind of it kind of helps you come up with with new melodies um, by doing the legwork for you but the problem is it doesn't really help you learn very much so I would try to stay away from arpeggiators I would play around with them a little bit if you feel like it but um, stick to this for now. I'll teach you those arpeggiators and things like that uh, as we progress. So we got all our notes here. We know all of them work and we can bounce around and do all kinds of cool things. And we can create all kinds of neat little melodies. So that's a one, three, five arpeggio. And now let's go ahead and talk about chords. So in C major, the C major chord is one, three, five, but played at the same time. So that's the chord of C major and you can play that anywhere you can play it up here down here and way down there where you can't even see it anymore just you have to scroll down to see it on the piano roll and um, so that's how you create a chord and there's many different types of chords I'm not going to get into all those yet that's in the advanced melody portion but one three five is your primary standard chord and you can add a seventh. So you could be one, three, five, seven, right? Sounds a little relaxing, right? Like a beach chord. And you can add the eighth, right? And you can go back and forth between them. So pretty easy stuff. And all we're doing is using those one, three, five patterns and we're using the the scale to make sure that we have all the correct notes so that we don't accidentally play things that don't sound harmonic um, and we can create just about anything under the sun so I urge you to explore this I, I would say pick a random letter on the keyboard again do the pattern draw the notes on the screen like you see here to show you where the scale is so that you don't lose track of the notes and then just kind of experiment with doing one three five seven eight seven five three and then you know kind of moving that around to different parts on this scale um, and there's there's just so many things that you can do so chords playing it at the same time all the notes at the same time that are in an arpeggio so a chord is basically an arpeggio played simultaneously instead of like this. And when you're getting into more advanced melodies, that's when you start combining them. So you might be like, you know, there's all kinds of different patterns. Not all of them are gonna sound as good as others, but that's where experimentation comes in. As you practice this and as you play around, you're gonna learn patterns that sound better than others that you can apply to any scale, any key. And then you can start changing between scales. Like uh, if you wanna go to the, from the scale of C major to A minor, I'll, I'll teach you later and uh, when we get a little bit more advanced, um, how to know what scales sound good together but let's say you wanted to go from C major to A minor when you're playing those notes you have the patterns you could be doing the one three five and then the chord and then you could switch to A minor and then just start playing that so as you can see 
the key of A minor is actually the same as the key of C major and I'm going to talk to you about the circle of fifths in a little bit and that's going to explain more of that in a more advanced way um, so that might help you to remember what scales go together and there you have it that's basically the foundations of arpeggios and chords and since you already know scales and you're probably still kind of piecing together that knowledge use the tricks that I've shown you here start messing around with arpeggios and in fact I'm gonna go ahead and give you a quick little assignment so why don't you go ahead and pick a random note I'm gonna say F okay and I want you to go ahead and create the scale of F major and draw it on the piano roll and then I want you to do the most basic 1-3-5 arpeggio and I want you to just play it you know go up and then down and then up and then down the arpeggio so go 1-3-5-3 three, 1-3-5-3 three, 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 okay and go ahead and do that and then let's see if it pairs up with what I have on screen so pause do that and see if it pairs up okay so what you should have came up with is we've got keynote whole step whole step half whole step whole step whole step half and now we're gonna do the arpeggio so one skip the second note delete it so one three skip this note the fourth note and then now we have five so one three five and we'll go ahead and get rid of those and now we'll move them so we have one three five three one three five three if you did this at a different speed than I did or a different tempo don't worry about it it's all still an arpeggio no matter how fast it's played um, this one's gonna be quite fast as you'll hear so that's just an arpeggio going, well, we can also move it down to F3. You don't have to start off at F4, and it could be like this. And these arpeggios are generally used as supplementary uh, background material. Often arpeggios will be playing in the background um, to kind of create a mood from which you can play another melody on top of it which would be called a lead melody so an arpeggio melody is kind of like a rhythm melody that's often used as accompaniment as they call it because it's accompanying the main lead melody your primary melody and just a quick example of that if we were gonna mess around with this arpeggio with uh, F F major we could do that and um, here let me show you an even more common one let's go one let's uh, mess around a little bit with it so now this isn't a one three five arpeggio but as you can see it still has the same kind of patterns as an arpeggio right we're still going up and then down and then up and then down and we're not playing any notes simultaneously so this is still an F major but now it sounds like this and that's still an arpeggio but it's not a 1-3-5 arpeggio anymore it's a 1-3-4 arpeggio so oh, we've got F major and it's one, three, four, three. So one, three, four, three, one, three, four, three. Instead of one, three, five, three, one, three, five, three. And we can repeat that as a accompanying melody and we can add notes on top of it either in this piano roll or in a completely different instrument to create a lead melody that goes along with it but since we want to make sure we're staying in the same key you can paint all of the notes on the screen so 
So keep it whole step, whole step, half, whole step, whole step, whole step, half. And now we see all the notes that we can play around with here as a visual guide. And I can literally just kind of pick random ones. So I could say, let's do A, then go up to C, then go to D, and then go to G, right? And then we'll delete these because we don't want them to actually play. And so that, now I haven't even listened to anything yet, but I know all those notes work. I know that I've created a lead melody now on top. That's a very basic lead melody. On top of an accompanying arpeggio melody. And that's what this is going to sound like. So, you know, it's not beautiful or anything, but you can do all kinds of cool stuff like that and um, as long as you're following the guidelines of the scale and the key that you're in you're going to come up with things that sound good and some things that sound great and the experimentation and you playing around is how you're gonna get from good to great and if you play something and you're like eh, throw it away that that's gonna be a, a reoccurring theme that I'm going to teach you. The most important thing I could ever really teach you in music production is to throw it away. That's what differentiates a good music producer from a great music producer. Good music producers get attached to the melodies that they're creating and they go, I got to work with what I have and I got to build off of that and I, I got to, it's already good. I just got to, if I keep building on it, maybe it'll be great. But no, that's not exactly how it works. Um, you can't just keep chiseling away uh, at something that's already kind of broken and make it great. If the melody doesn't sound great to you, throw it away, start again, create a new melody. Keep doing that until you have something that you're really starting to to feel tingly about or maybe your hair is staying on end. Uh, I, kn I know that sometimes when I'm working on a really great melody, my hairs on my arms will literally stand on end. That's the kind of thing you're looking for. And until you get to that, keep working on it. Keep messing around with these melodies until you start to, to come up with something that makes the hairs on your arm stand on end or makes you feel something inside you where you're like getting excited about it. And um, if something doesn't work, don't worry. You can always backtrack. You don't have to throw away the whole melody. Let's say you're building and you got this. And you're like, okay, I like that as a bass. And then you made that melody that I made, and you're like, eh, that's not very good. We'll just delete that part. And then, you know, experiment some more, playing around with these notes in this melody, in this scale. Okay, so since we have this 1, 3, 4 arpeggio in F major, let's go ahead and put together an example of making a real melody out of this knowledge that you've just obtained about scales chords and arpeggios let's try to incorporate all three and um, normally you do this on different instruments right now i'm just going to do it all on one instrument to make it easy and to show you how all of this comes together so we're going to make a new midi pattern here and I'm going to make it length four so it repeats four times and we're going to do we're just going to copy the notes from here this one three four three arpeggio in F major and we're going to copy that down here and I'm going to just do it all the way across actually I'm, I might just do it twice and then um, I'll show you something So, F major, one, three, four, arpeggio there. And let's add a low F note as like a bass tone to it. And we'll, let's do like a pattern. Okay, so we've got a little bass kind of melody there. It's not too bassy because the instrument isn't very bassy, uh, but those are some low F notes that work with the core F major. And the reason why I chose F is because I know instantly that's the root note. And usually when you're making bass melodies, you want to play the root notes 
of the scale that you're working in or the key notes of the scale that you're working in and you want to kind of build off from it and oftentimes bass melodies will be arpeggios as well sometimes it depends on the genre of music you're in but um, if you're ever in doubt you can always just play the root note over and over again that's guaranteed to work as a bass with whatever melody you're playing Let's see if I can turn down the velocity of these so that's the volume or the velocity and we'll get into that more what those mean you know what volume is, as it increases in volume, and increases in amplitude. Uh, we already covered that in some earlier lessons, but we'll, we'll reiterate it as we go along. Um, so we've got the bass, we've got the, the accompanying melody, now let's come up with um, something on top of that. So we're in F major, and let's see... Let's do some sort of chord. So let's do D, F, and A, which is a chord that is within F major. And let's see what that sounds like. Not very good. Does not sound good. Let's get rid of that. So it, as you can see, throw it away. A lot of making good melodies is basically just this kind of experimentation. So, we've got this again, we could do a chord up here, this is just a root chord, one, three, five, triad, and we could turn, tone it down a little bit because it is quite loud, and we could even repeat it, do kind of like a trance kind of thing, a little EDM vibe. And we can lower that volume even more, kind of make it a layer. And for because I'm lazy and we're just messing around, I'm just going to lower the tempo rather than, well, let me show you a cool trick, I guess. Since we're in the tempo of 120, that's what this means up here. That means 120 beats per minute. One, two, three, four. 1, 2, 3, 4, 120 of those per minute. Um, I want to make this not such a quick melody, right? It's going awfully fast. So one way to increase or decrease the frequency of a melody that you have in Ableton, it can be done very quickly by playing at double tempo with this button here or by playing at half tempo with this button here. And if this isn't showing up, it's the little musical note icon down in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen that opens this menu up. And you can, if you have your notes selected, you can control A to select all these notes, even though you can't see them, or you can just drag and drop, but I prefer control A. And that selects all of them, and then you can play at half tempo, right? And now, if I zoom out a little bit here, you can see everything's a little bit slower. So that's going to be a little bit better for what we're doing. So that's decent, right? But it's not too inspiring. So what we want to do is go ahead and change key on the second half here. So let's go from F major to C major. And um, no real reason for that. This kind of arbitrary. I know off the top of my head that F and C sound decent together. And we can literally copy this whole melody, everything that we've got, move it over here, and then drop it down to C or raise it up to see. But since we're already kind of high up there in, in pitch, uh, let's drop it down to C. So let's see what that sounds like. So 
So I know it's not like the most beautiful thing you've ever heard in your life, but it all works, right? All these notes work together and we have not done very much work to create this arrangement and this gives you a base to build off from. Then you can start moving these notes around and experiment and say, well, maybe if I change this, this C to a different note, maybe it will sound even better. And keep in mind, you can always paint the whole scale, you know, but then you're going to have to delete it at some point because you don't want to have them hear the scale play at the beginning of the track. Um, and you can paint that there as a reminder and you can just move these notes around. So now we have a good base to build off from and uh, we could play that and we could do another instrument. I, I did tell you I wasn't going to do two instruments. But just, let's just show you. We'll make another, one more instrument. We're just going to basically copy the Tyrell that we already had. I did that by holding down control, clicking this whole channel here and dragging it over and letting go of the click which copies it very easily and then now I have the whole melody again over here and I got a duplicate of this instrument and what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all this stuff delete all this stuff and I'm only going to play the bass and I'm going to make this a bass instrument by just choosing a preset. We're just going to choose a random one. Now on here, basses are usually, well they don't have very many basses on this, huh? Well, let's just experiment. Well, perfect, good enough. There you go. And then we could toss some, we could toss some reverb on this. It's starting to sound kind of like one of those 70s melodies right now. You, if you worked on this hard enough, it'd sound like it was on Stranger Things or something. But um, we're going to create a send, or I'm sorry, a return channel, and we're going to send, uh, not the bass, we're going to send the main instrument here, or I'm going to rename them with Control R. This one's going to be called bass. This one is going to be called lead. It's not really a lead. It's kind of like an accompaniment plus a lead, some chords. It's still kind of not really a lead in there because we're just doing chords and arpeggios there. So technically, I, you could call it a lead, but I, I wouldn't call it a lead. I would say it's more of an accompanying melody, and we might want a third instrument to play a lead. That's probably what I would do. So let's just go ahead and call it accompaniment. Be honest I don't know how to spell that I think it's uh, with a Y not an I and I'm gonna send that over here and once again don't worry what I'm doing when you pull this project file up all this stuff's already gonna be in place but I'm sending all of the sound from this instrument to this return channel over here where I'm just gonna th throw in a basic reverb from Ableton and this will you'll already have this in your project file when you pull it up so you don't have to do this yourself or even know how to do it um, I just wanted to show you what kind of what it looks like when you're doing some of this stuff so I've given it like four seconds approximately of reverb I'm gonna listen to it real quick um, just the reverb itself so that sounds all right And see the difference now? Barely any effort went into that. We could have created all of that without even listening to it. We could have created all of those melodies just with our knowledge of those patterns. And we didn't even have to listen to it. So how cool is that, guys? And so now we have a little bass, and it's playing the melody, the, just the root notes. Nothing more than the root notes. And, and we're just switching key. We went from one scale to another. We went from F major to C major, and, uh, or the key, the key of F to the key of C. 
and we were just using 135 arpeggios and 134 arpeggios um, to create chords and arpeggios. So here's the arpeggio in action, here's the chords in action, you know because they're playing simultaneously, and this is a 135 chord. So we've seen the chords in action, we've seen the arpeggios in action, um, just for kicks let's add a lead to all of that so we know that's the accompaniment I'm gonna lower the volume of it slightly I'm gonna leave the bass up pretty loud generally speaking the bass and the drums will be some of the most loud elements in your music we're not going into mixing right now right this is really basic stuff just giving you kind of a um, preview of what's going to come when you get to the mixing section of these lessons. So generally speaking, the accompaniment, the accompanying melodies, such as arpeggios and chords, will be lower in volume than the drums and the bass. And the lead will generally be somewhere in between, with the drums and the bass being the loudest, the lead being the second loudest, or the vocals, depending on what kind of music you're working on and the accompaniment would be more quiet in the background and I'm gonna call this one lead not load lead and uh, let's see we're in F major so I'm gonna just put some kind of random notes in here in the key of F major and we're going to experiment with this instrument. Let's just start with the uh, root note but we'll, you know what, we'll move it up. We'll do the third note in F, the scale of F major which is A and we'll play that. So that actually sounds pretty cool. I might not need to make a new instrument. We might be able to mess around with this because it already sounds pretty neat. I could tell right then, without even needing to know anything about scales, that that note, B, did not sound right. And so you don't always have to have these patterns up, but you do have to train your ear to know what's in key and what's not in key. So let's just experiment with making this melody go at different speeds up and down. And I'm really just placing these randomly, to be honest. Just within, just within the scale of F major, that's really the only constraint. And I am kind of just placing them randomly and listening as I go to see, okay, that sounds pretty good, that sounds good. And normally, if I was producing one of my songs, I would be much more meticulous about this process. But for the sake of education, I'm not going to try to compose a masterpiece with you right now. We'll get to that as we go on. But for now, we're just showing you melody creation in action and how it works with these arpeggios, scales, and chords. So I've made the first half of the melody, of the lead here. And we know that the, it's going from the scale of F major to C major. So I've got all the first half of it is in F major. The second half of the lead has to now switch to C major. So now I'm only going to play notes in C major. So, so that makes E one of those notes, which might be an interesting note to throw in there. So let's see what that sounds like. Eh, sounds all right, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't normally keep that. Let's let's do some more experimentation here.
Now this is technically doing another arpeggio here. So sometimes you will throw in some arpeggios in your lead melody. It doesn't really matter how long these notes are right now. Sometimes you'll only want each note to extend until the next note is played. Sometimes you'll want overlap. That depends on the instrument. We'll get into that as we progress. For now, you don't really have to worry too much about the overlap. And sometimes, depending on the settings of the instrument, even if you have a ton of overlap, you won't hear overlap. And sometimes, even if you don't have overlap, you will hear overlap. And uh, I'll, I'll teach you how to deal with all of that in our next lesson. Good enough. So now we have a lead, we have some accompaniment, and we have a bass line. Normally we'd throw some drums in there, but that's not for now. We're sticking to melodies right now. Uh, you'll start learning to produce your own drums once we get to the movement section of our music production course. But for now, check it out. We've got a bass, some accompaniment, and a lead all playing together to create a kind of pretty unique melody here so let's take a look take a listen one more time hear it all in action and i'll click through and show you what's going on at the same time Pretty easy, right? So keep what sounds good, throw away what doesn't. In fact, by those rules, I probably would have thrown away a lot of what we've already heard here, but still does sound good, and that's because we followed the guidelines of scales, arpeggios, and chords to create some melodies that we knew were going to work without even needing to necessarily hear them in action. And of course, when you're making leads, that's more of an art, which I'll, I'll discuss later um, in a future lesson, probably in the advanced melody section of the course, to be honest, because lead, creating lead melodies truly is an art, and you can't necessarily just follow patterns when you're creating leads because they are supposed to break the mold. It's okay to stick to the patterns with accompaniment, with bass lines and things like that, but with your lead and with your vocals, you really wanna break outside of those rigid rules uh, to create something inspiring and new and less formulaic, you know, less algorithmic. People hear these patterns and they sound good, uh, but they also don't wanna just hear nothing but patterns. So keep that in mind when we start making leads, leads are the one thing that's going to kind of break outside of all of that. So that pretty much covers everything that you need to know for the foundations of arpeggios. You got the one, three, five, that's called a triad. If you play it at the same time, it's called a chord or a chord triad, one, three, five chord. And that goes for major and minor. Playing the one, three, five, no matter what scale you're in, that's an arpeggio. And if you play it simultaneously, it's a chord. And you see, you saw how easy it is to to make accompaniment melodies by using these arpeggios and not necessarily doing the one, three, five, but maybe one, three, four, or one, three, five, seven, eight, seven, five, three, you know, the, all kinds of different variations of these arpeggios. And you know that if you stay within the rules of your scale, if you stay within those boundaries set by the key or the scale, 
you know that all those notes are going to work. Now, whether or not they're going to sound inspirational and evocative, that's another story. But with these patterns, you now have the foundation to start practicing, putting this into action with what I suggest you do is take what I have here on the screen and make your own melody out of it. Start moving these notes around. Maybe if you feel like it, I'm sure you're going to want to jump right in. You're probably getting sick of using nothing but Tyrell. So if you have another plugin and you want to go ahead and, and run that instead, go ahead and do that and uh, experiment with some different presets and, and things like that to create melodies too. Uh, but remember, right now, I suggest that you start off with melody, and then we'll move into movement. That's the next M in music production. And finally, mixing. That'll be the final thing. And the reason why is because melody, believe it or not, is going to be one of the easiest things to learn. Um, movement, rhythm and sequencing, which is, that's going to be what I'm going to teach you in the movement section of these lessons. That's starting to get a little bit more difficult because we're going to be time stretching. We're going to be making things fit on the grid. We're going to be talking about 1 16th notes, 1 30, 32nd notes, stuff like that. Uh, how to keep everything on beat, how to create your own drums. All of that gets a great deal more complicated than just putting some notes on the piano roll. So we start off easy, we move into creating rhythms and sequencing, and then finally we talk about how do we make all this not just sound like a bunch of noise, how do we have uh, everything sound like it has its place? And that's where mixing and the art of mixing comes in. So thanks for listening. I hope you learned a lot from this. If you have any questions, please put your questions on the forum by creating a new topic on the website. Uh, if you get lost, the website is in the link down below in the description on YouTube uh, or just go to jordanwinslow.me slash classroom slash courses and that'll take you to the main courses homepage. And from there you can put any of the questions that you have on the class forum and when you go to each lesson you'll see if you scroll down on the lesson page it's got the video for the lesson it's got the timings that tells you okay at this part of the video I talk about this at this part of the video I talk about that and below that is the classroom forum where you can put any questions you have you can start dialoguing with other students who are learning this stuff too. give your own uh, advice maybe you have some suggestions like hey Jordan why didn't you talk about this perfect if you have anything like that please share it i might i may even incorporate it in the next lesson so thanks again for listening guys uh, do me a huge favor and like this and subscribe to the channel and share this uh, class because it's a totally free class and uh, let's start getting the knowledge out okay talk to you guys later